like people who, who might have beef with IE who are from LA, it might be because they consider the IE like small town. Yeah. So, and since like we're from the city, yeah. I can see a lot of people having big egos yeah. and being like, what the fuck? Like, yeah. what the fuck is going on and over there? And I think there? that's what it is because I feel like one comment that I hear a lot is that like there's no talent coming out of the IE, which I think is crazy because like literally I could think of like three like famous people that can um, come out the IE, which I know it's not a lot. Obviously, like you said, like LA is different compared to IE. We are smaller and everything, yeah. but there is talent there, you know. Mm-hmm. What's up, you guys, and welcome back to school. But don't worry, everything is cool. I'm your host, Jalissa, and of course, I am here with the boys, Steve and Brandon. Say what's up, you guys. What's up? And we got a special guest today. We got Vanessa from IE and Besties. Hi, Woo. guys. <laughs> Thank you for having me. Dude, welcome they got me back. drunk already, you guys. <laughs> yeah. I'm pretty buzzed right now. We're starting lit as fuck already, so it's going to be a good <laughs> podcast. We're going to give controversial <laughs> takes. Um well, it's crazy, Vanessa. You know, almost exactly a year ago, you were on the show. That's really? the last time. Yeah. yeah. We had you on for Women's Month. Shout out to the women. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, you what were. Man. I was looking back at our, like, archives, and you, you legit were here, like. I think March 21st. No, it was, like, March, like, 16 or some oh. shit. <laughs> <laughs> Still. Wow, what the heck? Yeah. yeah. So crazy. Right? It's been a year now. Yeah. So updates yeah give me give give <laughs> our audience an update on your life what have you been up to oh how are God. the ie besties uh we're great we added a new bestie so it's three of us now yeah. shout out to isis she's great i don't know if you guys have had a chance to see her but yeah um yeah we've been doing good got um signed on to like a marketing agency so we've been getting like sponsorships which has been really cool um i'm actually going back to school in the fall Nice. Are yeah. you serious? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Man, I already applied and everything. Um, Damn, you waited for the cameras to roll to no. touch. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. It just came to mind. <laughs> um, my son's getting older. Um, yeah, just been uh, enjoying life, I guess. Nice. I feel like lately I've been getting good at um, being present and just like enjoying, enjoying the moment. like yeah. every single day as if it was my last. Damn, yeah. that's Aww. good. Uh, yeah. Wait, what are you going to major in? Or do you know yet? Um, I think I'm going to go for something in, like, child development. Oh, uh, did yeah. I? Yeah. What made you want to go back to school? Because I feel like the pot is great, you know, and mm-hmm. I do work currently at a school district. Mm-hmm. Um, but I'm like, okay, so basically what happened was I was, I had a roommate, right? I was living somewhere, and then um, that was always meant to be temporary. I always, the goal was to move, like, back with, like, my sisters, and, um, and my dad as well. And eventually when I was looking at places, I thought, oh, like, maybe I want to get my own place. Maybe I don't want to move back, like, in with my family. But I just felt like it'd be harder to live on my own than, like, financially mm-hmm. as opposed to if I live with my family. Mm-hmm. And um, I didn't like that feeling because I was like, you know, I'm going to turn 27 this year. And I still feel like I can't stand, like, on my own two feet. Well, maybe I could have, but it would have been, like, really tight. And I just didn't like that feeling, especially as a mom. I was like, yo, like, this doesn't feel, like, good. And I know I'm a single mom, so, like, I know it's, like, different. But um, I just told myself I'm going to turn 30 soon. You know, three Mm -hmm. that's three years away. And I don't want to feel that way. I don't want to feel like I don't have stability, that I don't have, like, uh, a plan, I guess, so to say. I don't want to feel like I can't provide my son, like, with more things. You Mm -hmm. know, because right now he's perfect. He has everything he wants and needs. But... You know, if he gets older and he wants to join, like, a club or try a sport or, you know, extra things that could get really expensive because I have, like, um, aunts and uncles that have kids and, like, traveling teams and all these things. It's really expensive. I'm like, okay, like, I want to be able to give him, like, the best that I can. And right now, if if he were to ask me to do something, like, insane, I probably wouldn't be able to do it. So I was like, okay, you know what? Like, I don't don't like that feeling because... My dad, I feel like, always hustled really hard to give us everything we wanted, and I feel like I never needed or any experience that I wanted to do growing up, like, it was done for, and and my dad had four kids, so I just kind of felt like, okay, I think it's time to have, like, another plan, because not that I was betting, like, everything on the pod, it take, like, taking off and, like, me being able to live on that, that that would be great, you know, that's definitely a goal as well, like, if we can make that happen, but I just told myself, okay, like, I have three years until I'm 30. 
I already went to college for almost three years, so I have a bunch of credits. So I was like, okay, I can I can finish. I had an appointment with like my academic advisor, and they were like, you could for sure finish by thirty. So I was like, okay, that's great. That's all I need to hear. And it's in a field, you know, that I f- think that there's many possibilities with it, and it involves children. And I feel like I I love children, um, especially when they're not mine, because I can give them back at the end of the day. <laughs> so, um, so I was like, okay, I was like, I'm gonna go for it. And ultimately, for me, the goal really is not to just like attach myself to the outcome of okay what is this degree gonna get me it's just more for the stability and who knows maybe if 10 years from now i'll wake up and want to do something else mm-hmm. i can do something else i just want to be able to say like okay i can have my own place i can provide whatever i need for me and my son and like not feel like tight um so i think a big thing that's driving me for sure i'm not gonna lie is like more financial stability than anything but I feel comfortable doing it in that field because it is something that I've seen in the past years that I mm-hmm. can feel passionately about learning and like being like going to work and doing things like that with kids every day. Like I feel like I would definitely not mind doing that. Um, That's good. Yeah. I, you know, what's crazy is that you're not alone either. I feel like a lot of people who are like reaching their 30s, at least in our generation mm-hmm. or people nowadays, are they haven't reached financial financial stability yeah. at the same time that like our parents did. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Which is crazy because, I mean, that just sucks, bro. Like, that really yeah. sucks because obviously most people want to at least get something that they can rely on for most yeah. of their life yeah. and to already be hitting 30. I, I, it just kind of sucks. Even though I don't think, like, your life doesn't end at 30. No, of course. Yeah, mm-hmm. I don't think we can, we turn 30. Like, oh, no, like, our best years are behind us, yeah. right? Yeah. I think we could age gracefully. For sure. Definitely. But that's cool. I mean, I'm really excited for you to go back to school. That's dope. I'm excited too. I was like, "Fuck, I'm gonna be a grown ass, twenty seven year old, and bunch of eighteen year olds." <laughs> That's crazy. It's do, cool. you g- do you have age insecurity? Do you ever like get like insecure about getting older though, or are you somebody who no, n- never cares? No, I don't think so. No. But um, it was so. <laughs> this is gonna be really bad. But lately, I was having a conversation with my friends talking about um dating people younger than me, uh, well younger than your age, I guess in general. And I've never dated anyone younger than me. Like, I've uh, never. And I've never even been attracted to someone younger than me. Really? Up until recently, I met a guy who was, I think he just turned 24. And I'm twi- I'm 26 right now, but I'm going to be 27. So technically, we're like three years apart. And to be fair, he doesn't look like his age. His age. Yeah. I thought he was older, you know. He was pretty big and, like, tall. So I was like, okay, like. I never thought that he would be 23 when I met him. Um, but the vibe was there, right? You know, I was like, okay, cool. Like, he's not, like, immature or anything. So we, we talked for a bit. That's done now. But um, it did make me wonder, like, damn, what is, like, the lowest, like, all day? And my friends were talking about it because they're like, dude, you're about to go to college. Like, <laughs> and I was like, dude, oh, <laughs> that's <true>. crazy. <laughs> like, that is actually really crazy because, I no, I would not date an 18 or 19-year-old. Like that's how I feel come, like how come? I genuinely feel like I'll draw the line at like twenty three is like probably the lowest I'll go. And even then I would have to like have several conversations with you to really like gauge like your mind mm-hmm. to see if it's really like something I could vibe with. Cause some twenty three year olds, especially men, that should be fucked up. I feel like they're so immature and like mm-hmm. can't hold the conversation. Yeah. Like Brandon's twenty three. Um, <laughs> not you, not you, friend, not you. Um, <laughs> but it's just it's really tough, I think to find a young man that's mm-hmm. not like just fuck boyish and doesn't care about mm-hmm. anything and just you know it's mm-hmm. very there i feel like a lot and it, and i will take like my fair share of like part of that in the sense of like in the places that i put myself in you know i don't expect to find a <laughs> like a super mature 23 year old in the club not that i'm looking for a 23 year old <laughs> but um but yeah, i don't think i date like younger people Oh, it's crazy because the other way around, like, let's say it's a, it's a man looking for a young girl. I feel like that's way more acceptable. So I wonder why, like, for women. Do you think that's a, the opinion that's shared by w- most women? That that they wouldn't date somebody who's younger than them? No, you know, it's, I actually feel like a lot of my friends have been saying that they would date someone younger. Really? Uh-huh. They would. I'm not, I'm, again, I feel like we drew the line. We agreed that 23 was, like, the lowest. And even 23 would still be very, like, not just because you're 23, that's enough. Like like I said, we'd have to really, like, see, like, what other areas of your life, like, how do they look. But age-wise, uh, yeah, I think 23 is the lowest. And I, th- I was actually shocked because I feel like they were all going to think like me in the sense of, like, oh, no, like, I wouldn't date anyone younger. Because I feel like I always said I would never date anyone younger because I had an older sister who always only da- dated men younger than her. 
and I thought oh, it was wow. cringe. And I was like, bro, <laughs> like, I was like, how could you do that? I don't understand. Yeah. But um, but now that I'm older, and I'm like, okay, I think I get it now. But but s- okay, relax. Not, listen, don't think I'm over thinking <laughs> right now. But your DMs are gonna be filled up with no, a bunch of eighteen year olds. Yeah. Um, but I, I, after dating this <laughs> man, I understood like, okay, just their age is not like doesn't equal like their capacity mm-hmm. to be like a good partner. I guess in a sense. That doesn't apply for everybody, but there's some uh, men out there that I guess. Damn, well she's hitting us with the age is just a number, bro. <laughs> no, <laughs> literally. <laughs> but, but actually, nah. the guy I'm dating right now is 31. So that that's also oh. been another jump for me because I've never dated anyone that's not either like my age or like a year, maybe two older. Mm-hmm. That's always kind of been like my scope. So, do you see the maturity? Like, do you see the differences? Um, <laughs> no, yeah, he's definitely mature. <laughs> I definitely see the differences. I feel like the main thing I've noticed, um, especially with this guy is, well, for one, he runs his own business. So I feel like that has a big thing to do mm. with like time management. He's like very organized. So it's I'm, one thing I've noticed is like, it's not just like when you date a guy like my age or like, that where it's very easy to see them like, oh, like, you know, like, let's see each other. Um, this guy has to be very like scheduled. It, there's not room for enough like spontaneity, which I'm not used to, but I'm working with it. Is know? that more attractive than somebody who would be more like spontaneous because they have, I guess, responsibilities? Me personally, I feel like it's not unattractive. I think I'm just not used to it, so I'm trying to get with it. Does uh, that make sense? Like I'm yeah. trying to understand, like okay, like he's busy, he's older, he's you know he has a business, he has like you know his day, he like he's very organized and planned. And I'm the complete opposite. I feel like I'm more of like, yeah, I know what I have to do in my day, but I can also go with the flow. I can I can cancel things. I can, you know, I if I really don't want to do something when the day comes, I won't do it. Whereas him, I feel like he's more committed. He's more like like rigid in a sense. Mm-hmm. Not too rigid, but it's just like there's that difference. Mm-hmm. Um, but, I mean, it's not – so far it's, it's worked out. I mean, I do feel like I have to keep myself, like, in check, though, in the sense of um, – I could feel, like, my anxious attachment acting up. I don't know if you guys know about, like, attachment styles. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, well, for me, I have, like, an atta- a, an anxious attachment style. And um, I think I, it, when I don't feel someone, like, giving me, like, all their attention, I start feeling, like, well, why aren't you? Like, what's wrong with me? And those are, like, my old ways of thinking. And it's been really interesting to, like, observe them and see those thoughts come up and be, like, okay, like, I'm low-key kind of tripping right now, but I know this isn't me. Like, I know this is, like, probably, like, my wounded, like, child right now wanting, like, all the attention, wanting to feel, like, validated. Mm -hmm. So I have to really, like, step in and, like, okay, what can I do right now? Like, can I go for a walk? Do I go to the gym? Like, do I read my book? Like, do I play with my son? Do I go? I'll go to my sister's room, like, just start laughing. And, like, I'll get my mind off of it. And, um... And then I'm like, whoa, why was I tripping? That was crazy. Like, Yeah, (laughs) it's really crazy. because literally. uh, People's... The way people treat... The way people are in relationships mm-hmm. is really related to how their parents treated them as kids. Exactly. And I think that affects you a lot more than people think. Like, you grow up, like you said, your anxious attachment, it's probably because of something that your parents did or didn't give you. Yeah. Um, and I think when you become aware, it helps you It helps you navigate relationships a lot better, whether that's, like, romantic or even your friendships. 100%. Because I think that it's easy also, like, <laughs> if you're a friend, like, if you have friends who are, like, how come they're not always asking me to hang out or, like, how yeah. come they're not always checking up on me, but, like, I'm always thinking about them. Like, that's fucked up. Like, is there something personally that I'm doing? Yeah. But it's rarely ever that. It's usually people have, like, personal issues. Because even they have their own attachment styles. Exactly. What would you guys say your attachment styles are? What are they? It's anxious. Anxious, uh, avoidant, and secure. Secure. Yeah. Secure. Avoidant. And there could be a mix of, like, you could have, mm-hmm. like, two. I think, for me, I think I, I used to think that I had avoidant because I would avoid, like, is it like that I avoid my feelings or like I avoidant don't like talking about avoidant it? Avoidant is as if is an example that I remember my philosophy teacher gave me is that your partner is always like trying to reach you or trying to like tell you I love you or like maybe be more affectionate. And you're always mm-hmm. like, man, I don't really like I don't really fuck with that. Like, I'm not into that. Mm-hmm. Um, but then once they're like, oh, OK, like, I guess they don't like me. Like, I'm gonna leave. Then you're like, no, 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 I do like you. I just I don't know when you give me attention. I just I just for some reason feel the need to push you away. That's an avoidant yes. attachment mm-hmm. style. So yeah, so basically, like, avoidant people feel like connection and closeness isn't safe. Like they'll lose like the anatomy mm-hmm. if they like give themselves to you. Like it's they see uh, they see closeness as a sign of weakness. Mm-hmm. So they they don't they avoid like the closeness. But the thing is that when you're f- they're far from you and you give them space, 
they also crave that. They also want the closeness. Mm. So, because it's like part of yeah. like our biological, yeah. like just human nature to mm. need closeness. Mm. They, it's like, so it's kind of like they're stuck between like a wall and like a sword. Like they're just like, fuck. Like, yeah, avoidant like attachment style. Oh, sorry. I didn't mean to. No, 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 go ahead. Yeah, avoidant attachment style doesn't necessarily mean that like you don't like your partner. Yeah. It, it just means that you have trouble receiving yeah. their love. That you're you're very like pushing away that person despite yeah. you. It's like yeah, like you said, it's like a paradox almost, like yeah. a cycle. Of, like I want them, but then when they do give me what I want, I want to push them away. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then insecure is, is very obvious. Like you're very they don't spend time with you, they're not around you, um, they don't check up on you, and like you become very insecure of like oh no, like I need my partner around me all the time, or else I feel like they're gonna leave me. That's kind of insecure. Secure is very you know it's very simple. Like, I'm like, oh, no, it's okay. Like, they could do whatever they want. Like, they'll message yeah. me in, like, three days when they have time. Yeah. yeah. That's, like, secure. Yeah. They say, it, I remember my uh, philosophy teacher told me the worst relationships, or at least the most toxic relationship, is people who have avoidant who and then uh, in insecure attachment styles. When those people get into a relationship, it's the worst because, obviously, one person is always, like, I'm insecure if you're not with me all the time. But then the avoidant is, like, well, I don't want to be with you all the time. Yeah. Despite them actually liking each other. Yeah. You know, that's the worst toxic relationships what do you think yours is i don't know i feel like i used to be i guess avoidant where i didn't like the closeness and i used to think that um my partners were always very clingy and i was like i don't like this and i felt very uncomfortable now in my current relationship i would say maybe i'm in like more of an anxious part um because I don't know, I think it's just from my past relationships that have gotten me that way where I just get anxious and I overthink a lot of things and I'm like, oh, they don't actually like me or like I'm not very acceptant of like their love or I question it a lot where I'm like, mm, I don't know, do you actually like I feel like I question a lot of things for sure. Um, but I know for sure that like I feel very anxious in my relationship, but I know that comes from like insecurity again of my past relationships that I lived in. Um I don't know. I, I feel like maybe a bit of both. Mm-hmm. But um, well, that's interesting that you say of your past relationships, because most of what research says is that the reason why your attachment style is the way it is, is mm-hmm. more of wha- how your parents treated you. Yeah. So I think that's I th- interesting. Yeah. Well, because I feel like if I'm thinking of the way my parents treated me, I feel like they never really. I feel like when I would express my feelings, they never really were like, oh, like they would comfort me they would teach me a lesson or they would tell me something opposite from that. And, but there was times when they would like, I guess in a way spoil me where I think that also comes from it. Where like, if my boyfriend isn't giving me attention, like I'm like, why aren't you like paying attention to me? Or like, why aren't you like, like basically obsessed with me? (laughs) Um, And so like, I feel like I would feel that and that comes in with the insecurity. Um, I don't know with my past relationship, like what it could be. I mean, there was a lot of like betrayal in that relationship. So I have a lot of like trust issues in that. And that gives me anxiety of like, um, are you losing like trust with me? Like, do you not like me? Like, that's what I kind of sort of feel in that. And I think that's why I get very anxious in the fact of like, oh, he doesn't like me. Like, mm-hmm. uh, like he's losing or he has somebody else kind of thing. And that's what makes me think of like my past relationship where I'm like, oh, my past relationship, like, he cheated on me. So I was like, oh, like, maybe, like, he has somebody else now. And, like, that gives me, like, the anxiety of, like, oh, I'm not, like, pretty enough or some shit like that. Mm-hmm. Like, it just makes me overthink. Yeah. Which is why, like, I don't know fully what it is, mm-hmm. like, where it's coming from. Um, mm-hmm. But I know if I were to think, like, from my childhood, I think it's just a lot of that. Of, like, when I would express issues that I had, my parents wouldn't, like, comfort me in the way that I wanted them to. Sometimes where they would kind of like invalidate my feelings. I think not to not that I'm a therapist. I'm <laughs> trying to I'm trying to diagnose you on the spot, but yeah. to me it sounds like your parents never gave you security. So even in relationships where you got cheated mm-hmm. on and then you faced like infidelity, mm-hmm. um, it made you feel even ten times worse than somebody who didn't have that as a as a child because mm-hmm. you already didn't feel secure and to have yourself betrayed in the place yeah. that you put a lot of trust just amplifies those feelings to a certain degree so i think it is related to your childhood Mm -hmm. i just think that past relationships only amplified that aspect of it but uh brandon what do you think your relationship attachment is um i'm not sure i can give an answer just because i never really 
I've never, it's not, I've heard of it, but I've never really like thought about it. Yeah, not enough research. And I, I thought it was kind of like, um, what's the other one? We did it on here. The other one that people talk about, uh, the, the love languages, uh, or uh-huh. like that's common people say, but like, uh, the reality is, is that's not real. Like mm-hmm. you've heard of that, right? How it's not real. I never um, heard that. Uh, Elaborate. Uh, yeah, what do you mean? Yeah. <laughs> like the love languages, there's not only five. Like you just give love how you give love. It's kind of like astrology mm. type type shit. Mm-hmm. Um, so I kind of thought it was a little like that. Mm-hmm. So I was kind of like, I mean, I'm not like, how do I say it? Like Bro, but <laughs> attach, okay, but attachment style is a real psychological thing. No, I know, but that's what I'm saying. Like I thought it was like that. So, mm. I just so never you've really never looked into mm-hmm. it. Yeah. Do you so. need to be texting your girlfriend all day, 24-7? Do I need to be texting her yeah, all like the time? Yeah, like if she didn't text you all day, how would you feel? If she didn't text me all day, how would I feel? I'd just be like, she's busy. She's got stuff to do. Yeah, would it, would you be like thinking about it all day though? Would you text would her I like, be hey, thinking what are you about doing? Her? Um, no, but if I was, I'd just be like, yo, uh, just checking to see if I understand if you're busy. That's about it. Mm-hmm. Um, but I wouldn't be like, she hates me. What <laughs> What about if like you guys had plans and then she was like, hey, actually, like a friend came in town. She's only gonna be here for today. Do you mind if we rain check? I understand. Yeah. Uh, secure. His parents love them. Oh, he's secure. <laughs> <laughs> he's secure boy. He's I, don't, secure. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe. I, I don't know. I also think that sometimes it's hard to like self diagnose. Yeah. Like I think it sometimes you need to be told what you have. Yeah. Rather than just like be like, I'm like Sorry good. guys, I have the sniffles. It's all good. It's all good. <laughs> I'm not emotional. <laughs> <laughs> he's crying. He's, uh, he's all shaking, trying to hide it. it. Yeah. He's uh, like, No, it'd be fine. It's all bad. <laughs> <laughs> I promise you understand. <laughs> Well, yeah, because I think people lie, too. Like, I, I think, like, for so now. Because I want to say, I want to be like you and be like, I think I'm secure. Yeah. Like, I honestly think I'm pretty secure. But then yeah. you could ask my girl and she'd be like, like, I don't this know about all that. <laughs> 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 yeah. Nah, I yeah. you, yeah. Because, uh, yeah. I mean, from what I've seen, because it, it isn't just romantic, right? Yeah. It's like how he is even as a friend. Yeah. I definitely don't feel like this dude's an insecure or yeah. I feel like maybe avoid it in the sense of, like, sometimes I'm like, I'm like, bro, I love you. And you're like, you're like, thank you. <laughs> like, do you guys watch um, You Girl? Have you guys ever seen that nah, show? Nah, well, nah. there's this Andrea's really like funny scene between Schmidt and Nick. And Nick walks in and, no, Nick's sitting and Schmidt walks in and he's like, oh, here, bro, I got your cookie. And he's like, oh, thanks. And he starts eating it. And he's like, oh, you just like, had an extra cookie? And he was like, no, like, I thought about you, so I bought it for you. He's like, wait, wait, hold up. What do you mean you thought about me? <laughs> he was like, well, yeah, I was just like at the store. I thought about you. I know you like cookies, so I got you one. And he's like, if I could spit this cookie out right now and give it back to you, I would do that. What do you mean you think about me? Why? Why would you think about me? And he's like, because you're my friend. I love you. And he's like, no, get away from me. But yeah, I just thought Brandon that was funny. does me like, like that all the time. Like what? That's not that. true. I'd be, like, mm-hmm. I'd be like going all out for you, bro. And then you're like, thanks, bro. That's not true. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually not true. I know. I'm just give kidding, him, bro. Give I'm him a kidding. hug right now. Yeah, for real. Give I him a kiss, if actually. If I could. If kiss how about kiss how his, his forehead. How about a fist, a fist bump? bump. Yeah, <laughs> 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 was that wholesome? Did you guys feel the love in no, that fist bump? I think I need a kiss. A kiss? No. You on, the see? on the forehead. <laughs> on the forehead. <laughs> you see, I respect yeah. him because he consensually, I could tell that would make him uncomfortable. Yeah, yeah. And so I actually respect <laughs> him more. So love and affection so makes I him uncomfortable. So I'm, be- Ooh. Ooh. Hey. So I'm being dissected today. <laughs> <laughs> we all are. We, we all are. are. I was going to say, Vanessa, does like learning about attachment styles make you parent your son differently? Oh, 100%. Definitely. Having that awareness makes a big, big difference. Um, but sorry, <laughs> uh, it's it's hitting me. The it's pictures. all good. It's the all good. No, yeah, it definitely yeah. does. Um, being more aware of just like in what ways? Yeah. Um, just because I feel like I also grew up my um my my parents. I guess I would consider them. My mom was very affectionate, but my dad was very dry, and it was very like a hard dynamic just because. My mom, even though she was really affectionate, I bump heads with her a lot. So I never wanted her affection because we were always fighting. Mm -hmm. So I felt like I always looked for that with my dad. But because he never was able to give it to me, like I always struggled. Now as an adult, like I I yearn for it. But when I get it, sometimes I feel like I can feel weird getting it. And sometimes I might even push it away, even though I really want it. Um, And I've gotten better at that now. But like with my son, like. Um, I could be very like affectionate with him, but he already will set his boundaries. Like if he doesn't want a hug or a kiss, like he'll tell me. And I could feel I could feel triggered sometimes when he like rejects like a hug or a kiss, and I feel like um, 
maybe if I wasn't as aware, I feel like I would maybe like force him, force mm. it on him. You know, like Latinos, they like to hug and kiss and grab you and force you, even though you don't want to. Because I know, at least me personally, growing up, I had a lot of aunts and uncles who would forcefully and grandparents that would forcefully grab me and kiss me and i would literally be yanking myself away from them and they would still do it um that's a topic for another day i wouldn't i don't like that but we'll talk about that we can talk about it in a little bit yeah and literally um i i don't do that with my son like i understand like okay doesn't mean he doesn't love me you know like it's just he just doesn't want to hug or kiss right now and that's fine Mm -hmm. and i also like sometimes when it's extra hard like if i'm having a really bad day and I ask Ezra for a hug or a kiss, and he says no. Do the way that shit like breaks me. I'm like, Aww. I need it. But then I'm like, you know what? I understand. Like, he's a kid. Like, he just doesn't. He hugs me and kisses me all the time. He just doesn't want to right now, and that's mm-hmm. fine. Um, but yeah, it, that, yeah. I guess it's it does. Well, happen. on the topic of kids and passing down <laughs> stuff like attachment styles, <laughs> the same way people pass down Spanish to their kids. <laughs> no, I'm fucking up. We're gonna <laughs> we're gonna play a special game of Yosabo. Julie, what is Yosabo? So Yosabo the game is a Latino owned small business and it's perfect for your summer game nights that are coming up. So you can find them on all social media platforms under Yosabo underscore the game. And all the links will be on our bio. So if you guys wanna um purchase any of your card decks, check the link in the bio. Um, but yeah, we're gonna be playing it right now. Yeah. Um, and since it's Women's Month, we're doing a <laughs> special edition of Yo Salvo. Do Latinas know their Spanish? Oh oh we're gonna have Julie versus Vanessa with our special guest host Brandon. But it's okay. Yeah. This this way you can learn, and then you can pass it down to your Let's kid. See. How many should we do? Let's. Uh, uh, are they all mixed up? Are they? I don't know. They might be. We'll find out. We'll see. It's the IE versus LA. It's the yeah. IE versus LA. Yeah, whoever I'm wins a, is I'm the better city. Latina <laughs> edition. <laughs> so, I'm you know. a little rusty. No, me. Okay, I'm going to start. I just played this last week and I bombed it, so you're good. But you're you had safe. practice. You guys can call me in for help once. A lifeline? Each, yeah, a lifeline, lifeline once. <laughs> okay. All right, number one. Como se dice snail? Caracol. Correct. Ooh. I oh, knew so that, but she just wait. I'm a tally. I'm a t- I have a notepad. I can find a tally. Uh, Julie, <laughs> Vanessa, one for Julie. Okay, uh, this is uh, not. Uh, they are mixed up. <laughs> ¿Cómo se dice keyboard? Teclas. Uh, uh, is that the close. Wrong? Very Teclon. close. Teclado. Yeah. Oh, teclado. Wow. <laughs> congrats. One congrats. On one. Okay. Uh, another mixed up one. Yeesh. This looks bad. Uh. I don't know how uh, do d- how do these ones work? Should I just say it and then? Hey, yeah, they got penalty cards. So and then the what happens? What happens if they if the they got to take goes? a shot? Really? <laughs> I'm down. Okay. Okay. <laughs> All right. This is a penalty card. Como se dice forest? Forest. Bosque. Yep. Correct. Wow. <laughs> okay, Julie. <laughs> take a shot. I was gonna get it eventually. No, it's I only just to give me a minute. What? Well, okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna take take a shot anyways. I was like, if only if they say the penalty word. Oh, yeah, it's okay. It's okay. My bad. Well, let this one slide. <laughs> my bad, yes, I will. <laughs> okay, this is another penalty card. Como se dice stumbled? Tropezar? Yeah, you got it. Oh. Wow. wow. So now it's, si sabe. It's, t- it's, it's tied, bro. <laughs> Ours wasn't this close. Como, uh, oh, this is a chancla card. Do you want to no, do chancla nah, cards? No, no, no. Nah, nah. You mix them? I, I don't know. I think it's because remember Valentine was playing with it? Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Como se dice stream? Also a penalty card. Stream? Mm hmm. Uh, Do you guys need a hint? Like a water stream? Yeah. Uh, There's like a famous. Does it start with an F? <laughs> Does it what? Does it start with an F? No. An L? You guys can no. choose to skip too. Uh, I'm done skipping. <laughs> <laughs> Is it Arroyo? Yeah. Wow! <laughs> Arroyo? What Arroyo? The hell? I didn't even uh, know that. I didn't even know that was a word. I'm smart. Uh, da, 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 da. <laughs> hell yeah. You, you are right, in right. two languages. Como se dice stove? Estufa? Yeah. Estufa. Damn, Julie. Okay. Yeah. Vanessa, come on. Put your I hands know, up. I know. <laughs> All right, this is a penalty card. Como se dice burst? Burst? Yeah. Burst, like, I guess, explode. Boruta? No, no, that's burp. Uh, like explota? burst out. Like no, 
that's explode. Yeah. yeah. Well, oh, I, yeah, yeah. That's, one. that's what it oh. says. Yeah. What is it? Explotar. Explotar. Yeah. yeah. I thought that meant like explode. Me too. Yeah. But I guess it could mean both. I guess we don't know. Como se dice armpit? Axilas. I put yeah. <laughs> that one even answers. So. <laughs> Como se dice spinach? Espinacas. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that was close. <laughs> who, would you say, who would you say that word? <laughs> you're the you're because they're both tied right now. So <laughs> tied up. We both give us each a point. We both said okay, at the same okay, time. Okay. Uh, so she so chose so not to have war. <laughs> I was about we to love each other here. No, I was about to it's choose. I was about to choose. <laughs> 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 How should I stop it? First to ten or what? First to first to ten. Okay. That's not yeah. bad. Como se dice pets? Pets? Yeah, like that's my pet. Oh, I know it. Oh, I, I know. I know this it. too. Know <laughs> Why am I blanking? Yeah. Mascota? There yep. you go. <laughs> yeah, I knew that. Very cool. I was gonna say peluche. Oh. <laughs> 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 Como se dice belly button? Obligo. Yep. <sighs> Yeah, it's neck and neck. She's getting all the body. Como se dice spring, like the season. Oh. Primavera? Yep. Oh, I heard sprain, like an ankle. Oh, oh my fault, my fault. Disqualify wow. that one. <laughs> what? <laughs> Como se dice hail? Like, uh, like ice? Yeah. It's not neblando, right? No. Is That's it no. yellow? No. <sighs> Dude, I've heard my uncle. I feel like say I, this I've, so I've heard times. my mom say it before. You can oh tie yeah, it up here, right. Vanessa. What does it start with? Uh, a G. <laughs> I want to say girasol, but it's no. a, it's oh, like. A I would not. I would not. I would is not it get it? Is it like gar gar something? Something like that. Yeah. Granizo. Yeah. Oh. Wow. I gave her that one. <laughs> yeah, you yeah, are yeah. both tied. <laughs> okay, uh, this is a, a penalty card. Como se dice carpet? Alfombra. Yeah. Damn. Wow, Vanessa takes the lead. Damn. Oh. <laughs> I lost. It's, it's over. It's okay. like watching a boxing match. Another another penalty card. Como se dice celery? I know this. What the fuck? Um. Nah, I wouldn't get that. Yeah, I wouldn't either. I would definitely say those penalty words for sure. Apio. Yeah, wow. Yeah. Start playing some offense, Julie. <laughs> she, she's one away. Once I lose, I lose, bro. Okay. So uh, I'm start distracting point. her, bro. <laughs> 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 All right. Como se dice raccoon? Aquacha? No, that's. No. no that's Aquacha. <laughs> <laughs> that's a. No, that's not it. How, how do you say what? Raccoon. Raccoon? Mm -hmm. I heard this too. I forgot. I don't think I'm going to get it. I've heard it a long time ago. I know I've heard it. You were kind of close. Yeah? Yeah. I was going to say like mapache. Yeah. 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 <laughs> there you go. Wow. There you go. <laughs> okay. Another, she, you said it like <laughs> light work. Like, I was going to say something like. <laughs> I was just going to say the right answer. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Hey, uh, another penalty card. Como se dice sweeping? Barriendo? Yep. Wow. And Vanessa wins. Damn. Yeah. Dude, the right moment he said I versus LA, I was like, I have to lock in. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. I know. For me, once I once I'm no, I'm losing. I just lose. I'm like, I give she up. Come on, Jaleen is not needed to throw in the towel. Yeah. Yeah. She threw in the towel. I yeah. I, I said once I lose, I lose, bro. That's Why? It. Yeah. Come on, Jaleen. None of the penalty cards got him except the the first one, but I did it wrong, so technically none of them got him. That's funny though. You literally heard I versus LA. She's like, oh, right. she oh. she had the whole. Uh, <laughs> I was carrying the I on my back. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it says I'm not. I'm not. I don't love LA. So I'm not gonna what? Talk. what? You're about to get jumped. She's gonna move to the I. Yeah. <laughs> no. I would never move to the I. You're literally wearing an LA <laughs> shirt. <laughs> She's like, ever. I never move to the I. No, I for real. Hey, why you said a little too aggressively? <laughs> 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 I'd move, I'd move up north, but to the that's bay. it. I move to the bay. Yeah. Take that shirt off, bro. You don't deserve to wear that. Mm -hmm. Give it to me. That's a cool shirt, think, who, do you th who do you guys think has more LA has more beef with IE or the bay? I Probably. think I think the beef with the IE is kind of one sided. Not gonna lie, <laughs> dude. That's I how we feel about LA. But I. Mm, I feel like IE has beef with LA and LA doesn't really have No, beef I feel IE. like I literally minds their business and all LA does is I, like I don't I mean I don't know. What do you guys think? What do you guys think? I don't know. I think LA's really big, bro. LA's like like triple the size of like the IE. 
Because, like, no disrespect. I mean this without any dis- dis- disrespect at all. Like, until, like, we, like, met you guys, I wasn't really even aware of what the IU was. Yeah. Like, I knew what Riverside was, but I, I didn't know that there was, like, a, you know? Yeah. So that's how I feel. <laughs> I don't know. Is that offensive? <laughs> like, no, no, no. <laughs> Honestly, I just, I think it's interesting that you say that because yeah. that's how, I mean, at least me personally as, yeah. as an IU native, mm-hmm. like, I feel like I always never understood what the problem was. I was like, why? Why what is there beef? Like, I don't get it. What What is the beef? Like, I don't, like, I I, if there is beef, I'm not aware of what it's about. Yeah. yeah. I feel like, at least being in the pod- podcasting space, um, we've literally, people from pod- LA podcasts have talked crap about the IE mm-hmm. podcast for no reason. Like, straight up, like, on camera, it's on video. And we're just like, damn, like, why are you tearing each other down? Like, we can, yeah. we can tear, like, we can tear each other up. <laughs> 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 like, okay. we could, we could be, like, up together, especially as Latinos, yeah. you know, yeah. like, um, but that's kind of, like, the only reason why I feel like mm-hmm. that, that, at least on my end, that I've ever mm-hmm. even heard mm-hmm. about beef. But I've never, I never felt like there was any, like, uh, drama or anything until I started getting older and I would drive to L.A. and, like, I'd have friends from L.A., and they would just start talking mad shit about the IE for no reason. And I'd be like, damn, like, that's when I started noticing it. Like, oh, people, yeah. like, really don't like the IE. I don't understand. I think, like, if I had to put it in, a, in like, my take right now as yeah. I'm thinking about it, like, people who, who might have beef with IE who are from L.A., it might be because they consider the IE, like, small town. Yeah. So, and since, like, we're from the city, yeah. I can see a lot of people having big egos yeah. and being like, what the fuck? Like, yeah. what the fuck's going on and over there? And I think there? that's what it is because I feel like when – comment that i hear a lot is that like there's no talent coming out of the ie which i think is crazy because like literally i could think of like three like famous people that can um, come out the ie which i know it's not a lot obviously like you said like la is different compared to ie we are smaller and everything but there is talent there you know Mm -hmm. um but i do i will say though what i like about la uh, there's like this kind of hustle culture like people really like are chasing their dreams Mm -hmm. Um, and I, I could really, like, appreciate that about here and, like, the vibe, you know. And you're like, that's it, though. That's it, though. I fuck everyone else. Yeah, it's a little too much for my liking. Not <laughs> yeah. like, like, it's giving desperate, but not just, <laughs> <laughs> not just like. I generally um, think that's what it is, though, because, yeah. like, you said that. I, but I think I see that in the IE, too. Just from, like, the little that yeah. I've known you, you're the one who really put, like, the. You put it on the map for, for me. Yeah, <laughs> I agree, I agree. <laughs> you really put it on the map for yeah. me. Yeah. Uh, and you introduced me to all, because you guys got a bunch of hustlers there too. Like, yeah. you got a bunch yeah. of people grinding, trying to make something like out of nothing. Yeah. And Dude. I think that you guys are more at like at a disadvantage, because obviously you guys probably have each other, but yeah. in LA, we, there's just so many resources. Yeah. And that's not a dig. No, no, I just no, mean I that's, agree. What it, that's what it is. Yeah. And I think that's I why agree. people get offended when they see you guys doing something, because it's like, it's like all like I have all my resources and I can't do shit. Yeah. These guys from fucking middle yeah. nowhere think they're gonna do some <laughs> shit. <laughs> middle nowhere, nowhere is crazy. <laughs> <laughs> my fault, my fault, my fault. No, no, you're good. I get it. I get it. <laughs> Look, I fuck with you. Ah! Yeah. <laughs> I'm playing. <I> get it. <laughs> no, yeah, but I'm just saying but that. That's what I'm. I'm putting myself. I'm being yeah. that problematic LA fool. No. I feel like. Uh, but I feel like you saying that, like, especially hearing, like, just more of the hustle, because I thought you guys have more of the hustle, because, again, like, there's a lot more resources here, because it's a city, yeah, you know, yeah. it's a big yeah. city, and I think for me, that's why I've I've appreciated what you guys do even more, because of the fact of, like, of just the resources that you guys have, you know, and, like, <laughs> to me, it is, too, like, you guys are putting the IE on the map, like, yeah. um, I only knew about it just because, like, I was in a sorority, so, like, I would travel up and down of California and I visited like Riverside, San Bernardino a lot Mm -hmm. uh, and like Fontana a lot. So I was kind of like, I knew the area and I mean, I would, you know, there's raves there, like the, the NAS center is right there. So I knew a lot about uh, around it. Um, And then when I met you guys, like you guys even put more of it on, you know, on the world. So um, that's how I got to know about it. And I feel like that's why I even had a more of appreciation because I mean, we have family out there. Um, and we've gone and I've again, like how I said, like I've gone out there and I'm kind of like, it's cool. I'm like, I wouldn't live here. It's really hot. I think that's for me. And like, it gets really cold cause you guys are by the mountains. Um, but I'm just like, but it's a cool place to like be at. And there's cool people too. Like it's, and, and I don't get the, the trash either. Like why people trash it as much of like LA versus it IE. Insecurity, I bro. just, I, I haven't really heard it until recently. Mm-hmm. 
Um, for sure, it was always like L.A. versus the Bay, but I always just think about sports when when it's like that because mm-hmm. it's just like you know baseball. It's like Dodgers versus the Giants. Football. Yeah. It's like the Rams and the Forty Nine ers. Like yeah. it's the Warriors against the Lakers. Like you hear that a lot. So it's just more in the sports aspect. But I feel like if you're thinking about other stuff, I'm like I think people are just really yeah. just in in a in a weird way like envious in some way of like the IE and the way it is um compared to LA I guess but I'm like they're all cool it's it's I I've always been a lover for like all of California cuz I'm like I just love like everything and the cultures that we have up and down of California um so and it's just weird to like know that like you know there's the bay that they're all like together or whatever and then there's like uh SoCal, which is like we're all kind of like against each other, which I find like weird in a weird way because I'm like, why are we fighting? I'm like, why are we fighting? Like, mm-hmm. we've all kind of just grown up in these spaces, and I feel like we should all just kind of appreciate yeah. each other, you know? Yeah, we're on the same hustle, like, we're all trying to yeah. get somewhere, you know? I also just think like territorial rivalries is kind of cringe. Like, I think, like, <laughs> even like me from being from LA, born yeah, and yeah. raised, like, of a, like your family's been in LA for 100, for 100 years. Yeah. Like, I think territory, uh, like, rivalries are really dumb because uh, at least here in L.A., you see it even in gangs. And I think, like, I mean, I don't know. I hope I hope I don't get threatened for this. But I, I just think that it's so pointless because the people who actually own, like, the land and all those cities, they don't give a fuck about you. They're constantly trying to gentrify, berate you, yeah. like, get rid of you. Yeah. So I feel like to be so prideful about a you're land that doesn't be, give a fuck about you. You're beefing yeah. with the wrong people. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. So I'm like, why are we going to beef with, Especially because we're all Latinos. We're yeah. the minority. Yeah. You know, we should be supporting each other. But yet to start beef in, in like, a land that isn't e- that used to be part of mm-hmm. Mexico, but now isn't, and now they're constantly trying to get us to get the fuck out of here. Yeah. I feel like, why not? Why stand separately when we can stand together? Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know? I so, n- I, I think it's dumb. I think it makes me cringe when people are, like, rep so hard, like, <laughs> yeah, bro, f- we're, like, I'm from fucking L.A. Like, yeah. I, I, well, I, I do that, but, <laughs> like... <Yeah. laughs> And I feel like if you were truly like genuinely proud, you'd want to share that. Like yeah. if you like when I feel like when you truly like love and admire something, you want to share it, right? You mm-hmm. don't want to like keep it to yourself. So I think that's like I can appreciate, and I and I'm and I haven't just met like LA people that talk shit. Like I've met like you guys who love to show me around. Like when I come mm-hmm. out, so I love you know I love I love my LA people. <laughs> hey, she finally said it. Maybe it's time you became an Angelino. It's time you, uh, Angelina, and that's oh, what we call like to move to LA? Yeah, it's time you joined, i.e. went to LA. Oh, I just, I couldn't. I, c- I honestly could not. N- I think <laughs> Too much me, traffic or what? I think it's that, and, like, I think the roads are too, like, compact. Mm. Like, there's not enough space. And, and it's I mad expensive like It makes, it gives me, huh? And it's mad expensive out here. It gives me anxiety. No, ain't nothing. It's pocket change for me. Uh, Damn. Oh, I forgot. <laughs> you're balling like that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Honestly, ain't nothing. Ain't nothing. I'm she was like, I wasn't even thinking of that. No, I wasn't. Money was like the last on my list of <laughs> <Very> like. <cool. laughs> she, she was like, I get how you can I think about that. I get how I people from LA think coming about from that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but f- coming from my E. You know, I, it's so cheap out there. I've had time to save, you know. Oh, very cool. I'm playing. But you know what's so funny that you mentioned that, though? Because dating this man. um it's been really hard because, you know, I grew up with a father who literally, like, paid for everything. My mom never had to work a day in her life, um, and we lived very comfortably. So I, I, my mind, my mom and my dad would always be like, go get your degree, like, be independent, don't depend on a man. But the example I was given was always, like, rely on a man for everything. Mm-hmm. So that was always very hard for me growing up to kind of separate that in my relationships. Although I always found myself being the provider in the relationships, if that makes sense, mm-hmm. which was it never, it, I didn't understand it at the time. But now that I've kind of learned and grown from that, uh, I'm dating a man right now who, um, it's not, and it's not like, don't, I don't want you to think it's like mega serious either. Like we are mm-hmm. definitely in the early stages of dating, but mm-hmm. it's going really well. But it's very weird to kind of feel uncomfortable with the idea of him having a lot of money. Because I feel like my two, like I'm torn between like wanting, like if things were to get serious, right? Like I'm torn between depending on him, not that I can't have my own, but like just leaning on him as opposed to like being like, not like, yeah, you have your money, but like, I'm gonna still do me. Like, I don't, I don't need you. And it's been, I've kind of been thinking about like, okay, how is that going to play out? Like how, like what role would I take on? Um, And we've had a couple. 
we've had a conversation about it and it was like nice to hear his perspective as like a man that wants to be a provider but i still feel like i'm having that internal struggle like me personally like okay like do i feel comfortable with like a man providing for me like Mm -hmm. my mom like literally she depended on a man her whole life and she now she's divorced and like she's still living comfortably but she's unhappy like i don't know how to explain it so i'm just like dude it's well, I'm so interested to hear y- your perspective and you too, Julie, because I don't think we've ever just outright asked. Like, wh- what do you think about that dynamic in terms of the fam- family role, like a man providing while the woman, like, I guess is at home and is yeah. a caretaker? I know we've kind of, like, like I mentioned it, but I've never actually asked you guys as women, like, yeah. what do you think of that dynamic of, like, being a woman who where your, your man just provides for you? Yeah. Especially as Latinas. I think as a person who is a mom, like, let's say I was, like, with... Some, well, I was with my partner at the time when I had my son. It definitely um, helped 100% that he was very nurturing. So he was able to take care of me and my son w- through that. It was really nice to have someone to lean on, to not feel like I have to cook or clean or, like, take on other hard roles while I was recovering. Even w- during my pregnancy, like, he was always very attentive and, like, caring of me. But he did lack that financial responsibility. So I did feel like I had to work and I had to provide financially because it was in enough. And uh, that would stress me out a lot. Like, it would. And, like, I just, like, again, going back to the example I had, money was never an issue. So it did, to me now, I feel like, not that I, well, I'm not even gonna lie. I would love if a man provided 100 percent like financial stability. Not to say that I'm gonna sit on my ass all day and like not get my own money. Like I definitely, I I think what I'd like to say is I would want to work because I want to, not because I have to out of necessity, right? Yeah. Like I feel like that's kind of like a dream for me, and I hate to say dream, but because I feel like not a lot of men recognize the value in providing. Because I feel like as women, whatever you provide for us, like, we really, we multiply it, right? Like, I think when a man takes care of a woman in every single, like, aspect of their life, we really set the tone to how much a woman can give back to you. Like, it's, I, the way I like to compare it is, um, I, and it's, like, compar- this is relating to, like, my pa- my parents, but when I was young, me and my mom would fight a lot, right? And at the end of the day, after fighting all day, she would boss me around, like, do this, do this around the house, and it would make me angry. I wouldn't want to do it. I'd be like, fuck, like, in my brain, right? I'd be like, fuck you, like, I don't want to do that. And I wouldn't do it. I would, like, you know, just ignore her or act like I didn't hear her or just, even knowing that it would cause more problems by not doing it, I would just, like, be like, go to hell. But there would be, like, those very few days, right, where, like, we would have a great day, you know, we weren't fighting, we really understood each other, we had a good day, whatever, and then I w- she wouldn't even need to ask me to clean. I would just do it without, you know, I would just do it without her having to ask. Or if she did ask, I would do it happily. You know, I wouldn't, it wouldn't be a problem. And I feel like that can translate even in relationships. I feel like I read in the Bible that like a man is the head of the household and he will set the tone. So like a man is, like I feel like if a man treats a woman good, it. I'm not saying that you won't ever fight, but I feel like the environment will be like mm-hmm. good. The well, general. the way like I guess re- removing even the religious aspect of yeah. it, the way it sounds that it sounds as if if a man provides out of love, then the woman will provide out of love. But if yeah. the man provides expecting something in return, then uh, whoever they're in the relationship with will never willingly do it out of love. Yeah, and it'll feel like a yeah. chore. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And so I think that's where I I think the problem, like I think that's where I always like find myself is because yeah. like especially as Latinos, we kind of have that traditional mindset of the man provides and the woman stays at home and does yeah. all the household duties but i think that sometimes it because we get raised and like you said it, that we see that example in our parents yeah. that i think a lot of men grow up and think that they they are doing that because they expect that in return exactly. instead of just doing it because they love their wife exactly yeah and i, and I think that's why I'd like julie what do you think uh, i think that's why i want to hear the woman perspective because I mean, as a man, obviously, like, if somebody paid for all my stuff and took care of me, I'd be like, that's fucking awesome, you know? Like, mm-hmm. obviously, nobody really likes working. Um, yeah. But it's different when you change the mindset of the people actually working. Mm-hmm. Like, if I'm, like, for me, because my example was my father, I did grow up thinking, like, I want to provide for my wife. And I would love if my wife stays at home. 
And I never thought about it. Like, I want her to stay at home because I want her to cook me dinner, clean yeah. the dishes, clean the house, and take care of my kids. I never thought of that. I more so just, like, I love my mom because my mom has always taught me that, like, she does everything for us out of love, mm-hmm. not because it's expected of her. Yeah. And, yeah. I, and I think that's where, like, I've always had trouble with it because I, I can see how it's problematic, but I can also see, like, where sometimes it's it's generally being done with good intention. Yeah. Um, but what do you think, Julie? About what? About, like, About like, I guess just like uh, the traditional role of, of a man and a woman. Do you think that uh, when women accept like being stay at home moms, that there's like something like necessarily missing? Because like that's what I think about. Like I think like th- think there's sometimes things missing where, like I just think I think of toxic dudes that I've known that grow up in the same culture mm-hmm. and are like I can't wait to have a wife so she can like fucking <laughs> like clean, clean my room yeah. and like do all my shit and it's yeah. like that's the wrong intention you know mm-hmm. Th- and i see it even in our comment section sometimes of like uh women who want to aspire to get an education are never going to get a real latino man because a, lat- a latino man is raised with the provider mindset and we don't want a girl who thinks that she can work for herself yeah. and it's like but that's li- i think you're like putting your mind in the wrong place like mm-hmm. i don't think that's exactly what even a provider mindset means yeah provider uh, provider mindset is basically just a leadership mindset yeah. it just means that you want to take the lead and it doesn't mean that you expect anything in return i mean it's like when you give a gift right if you if you gave me a gift you're doing it out of the kindness of your heart because you care for me, not right. because, like, I'm giving you something because I hope you give me something in return. Yeah, and I also want to add to that. I think when people hear provider, they automatically assume, like, mo- like monetarily, like, money or financial. But when you provide, you also provide, like, support, like, em- emotionally. You provide, you know, um, like, physically. Like, there's so, there's so many ways to provide support. It's not just financial, and I feel like when you truly love someone, and you're because you you grow and you evolve as you get older, you you have to. There's no way, even as I mean, you could stay the same, but I feel like in a healthy relationship, you're supposed to evolve and you're supposed to love and support your partner through that, right? And mm-hmm. I feel like when you truly love someone, you're gonna want to be there for them in like every stage that they're evolving in in their life, and um, and That's I just true. feel like naturally men like masculine that are in their healthy masculine, like they're gonna want to provide that support. Not just financially, um, but also like d- just being happy that they're yeah. reaching their goals, that they're re- exactly that they're being there for their their emotional baggage. Men are gonna want to take that on and help. I'm not saying like do it all the time. Like if you don't have space for, it, obviously, like know your boundaries, know when you need space, you know, or even if you're having financial like issues, whatever. Because I know it's hard these days to kind of pr- like be like just one how ho- like one the one, one person providing for a whole yeah. family. I know it can get tough. But um, I think it's more of just, like, the the attitude you have towards yeah. it, right? I think yeah. that's yeah. what makes a difference. It's, like, maybe right now I can't provide for you 100%, so maybe we might have to do it together. But I'm providing in all these other ways that I can't, mm-hmm. you know, do for financially, and that's okay because, you know, I'm still working towards this. And I think that's the – I think what really – changes things is like the intention and the attitude behind like why yeah, you're doing things. I, I totally agree. I think yeah. it's a it's an amazing point to bring up that provider yeah. isn't just provider of money. Yeah. Because I feel like that's where a lot of resentment does build is that mm-hmm. like I can't because uh, you could see the other side of the argument of like, man, like I it sucks that like in the this economy I can't provide for my wife. Like they're gonna be angry at me that I maybe can't um provide for them but it's like but you're thinking about it with such a materialistic way exactly. where there's other ways you can provide like you said the avenues exactly. there's emotionally like physically yeah. um even like psychology like what are they what are they asking for in a partner that maybe you can provide for them yeah. because yeah i mean realistically in the economy we live in now like yeah. it's pretty hard on this hard of course if you're yeah. like some kind of like entrepreneur or like youtuber yeah. or yeah. podcaster <laughs> 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 yeah but I, I feel mm. like for me it's I don't know. I've always had, I guess, that debate with myself because I also grew up with the thing of like, I should kind of be dependent of a man, but I also should be independent as a woman. Mm. And that's been a really like hard battle because I've always been conflicted because I'm like, you know, I've talked about it on here where I'm like, I don't like having like, I guess, those gender roles, right? Of like, I can also work. I like working. I personally like working because I like meeting people and I like talking Mm -hmm. to people. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't want to just be stuck in the house and just, like, be cleaning and just, it's just me, myself, right? I will still have my friends, but I feel like work has put me in such a good environment of, like, meeting people and creating these new connections with people. 
Um, and that's like the other reason as to like why I like working. Mm -hmm. But I feel like it does go back to just how well I guess your partner treats you because I feel like if it's a good and healthy intention of like I'm going to provide for you and you are kind of like like how my parents did it like my my dad said I'm in charge of work and mom is in charge of the household mm -hmm. like it was kind of like those were the roles right but I feel like if there was a little more communication and like if, it, if there was a little more of like can you help me around this with the house or like I'm struggling a little bit here like just having that communication and I feel like having that healthy, um, again, communication and just relationship really helps a lot. Because I feel like with my own personal relationship, I feel like we've talked about it too, of like how that would be. Um, and I feel like I would be very much trusting if like if he wants to work, like that's fine. I'll be in charge of the household. But that's like us communicating that of like what are we going to separate for each other within like the household. I have told him too, like I was like if – there's a dish and like you did that like are you gonna clean it are you gonna do this but it's again like that constant communication of like what roles do we have playing and and all that and i feel like um it's just been it's been so like nice to at least talk about it just because i've always struggled with that of like i don't just want to be stuck at home like i want to do other things mm -hmm. um and i have like these other interests that i want to like play on you know and i feel like having that open communication with him has helped me a lot of like I'll be fine if he w was the one, if he were the one to just provide for us and work for us. Like, I'd be fine with that because I feel like, again, we have that trust and that communication of, like, what we want to do. Um, and, like, again, like, I've still had that internal fight of, like, but do I just want to depend on him? Like, do I, like, is it, do I trust him enough to just depend on him? Um, and are we going to be okay? Again, because it's, it's, it's a different lifestyle of what our parents were, I mean, we've talked about it. Like, our parents were already buying houses, like, Bro, by, for real. by then. And, like, for us, we're still struggling to even, like, find an apartment. Mm -hmm. Like, it's just, like, it's a different um, times that we're in. But I feel like that's why I've always just had the struggle with it. Because I'm like, I want to work. I like working. Like, mm -hmm. it's cool. But I don't think my partner would be like, don't work. Like, no, like, like I, I'm the man. Like, I'm going to do this. He's very accepting. Yeah, like well, that's also insecure. Like, if, if a man is like, I don't want you to work, like, yeah. do this. I feel like there's a level of respect in it where, like, I, I get if it's like, no, I really don't want you to work because, like, mm -hmm. I love you. I get that there's, but there comes a point where it's about respect. If yeah. the girl is, is just, like, genuinely over and over, like, I want to work. Like, this is what I want to do. It comes off as very insecure about your masculinity yeah. because you think that them having some sort of independence means that, Oh, uh, you're not fully being there for them. You're not able to financially. You're failing as a man, which isn't true. Or not just yeah. that, but it could also mean that they're being controlling, right? Like they're mm -hmm. yeah. jealousy. Like they don't want them to interact with other people. They don't want them to have friendships or, uh, you know, acquaintances outside of just them, you know? Yeah. Because mm -hmm. um, I feel like that's what I see a lot. Well, I've seen a lot when men don't want their partners to work. A lot of times it's not even because they're doing it like uh, out of the goodness of their heart. They just want to like seclude their partner from oh the world. That's true too. And I think it's so fucked up like that you. It's scary. That, it's scary. Yeah. Yeah. Because people like that are very abusive. Mm -hmm. um, and I feel like it's not spoken about enough how like abuse isn't just always physical. Um, and I have like a couple, a couple, I have like two friends right now struggling with that where it's like. It's it's sad to see like the way how some men need to feel in control of a woman, mm -hmm. like completely from like the moment they wake up to the moment they go to sleep. Like they need to like, at least it's probably gonna be like to like t I know this person's never gonna find out, but this person she got away from her partner, um, because it, the abuse got really bad, and so she moved back with her family. But she didn't break up with him. They're still together. She just felt like okay, we just need some. Uh, we can't live together. She he kept her makeup. And he said, "You don't need your makeup. You can wear it when you come see me. Other than that, like you're not gonna wear any makeup." That to me, bro, was like insane. And it's just like little things like that that you you never think. I feel like when you're not used to being like in really toxic relationships, like you know, you can probably imagine things that are bad in relationships. But then when you actually hear stuff like that, you're just like, "What the fuck." Like, that's insane. Yeah, that's fucked up, man. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. I, I don't know. I mean, it's just toxic masculinity and insecurity. Yeah, it's, it's controlling. So it's just, like, all the signs of, like, a sociopath. Yeah. 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 And it is scary because I, I, for a long time, I think that was the standard. Like, yeah. if, if you look at the nuclear family from, like, the 1950s, 
that was like a a woman is basically like a pet yeah. like that that the man has and has to maintain yeah. and take care of um but I, I feel like there's toxic ways in that and then there's there's the healthy ways in that yeah of course like i feel like you can have you can do both i just feel like for sure because of the i guess the new like world that we're kind of doing it's like oh we shouldn't just all be dependent in like a man but i feel like there there's a healthy way to like no, do that i you feel know? like as long as like it's the dynamic that both parties want mm-hmm. right i feel like it's fine of course yeah mm-hmm. but i feel like um for the most part at least on like on my end like i I'm, i feel like i wouldn't mind not working if i'm being honest like mm-hmm. i can for sure say i'd hop on that boat <laughs> but i would still have my hobbies though you yeah. know what i mean like yeah i wouldn't be able to sit at home all day just yeah. clean and wash dishes and fucking cook you yeah. know like i would do watch it watch netflix I, yeah <laughs> no literally i would still have to go out into the world and like you know yeah uh-huh. i think w- what was a profound thought that you gave me right now was what you said that abuse isn't always physical because I think that paints also a picture that sometimes people don't even realize that they're in toxic relationships. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think that um, there's this idea that because they don't hit you, that they're it's healthy, yeah. or because they don't hit you, they're not actually abusive. Yeah. And I think that's not true at all, that sometimes emotional abuse is either equal or worse, worse. than physical abuse. Because, I, I mean, uh, you per- you perceive the world and you experience things through your mind. Mm-hmm. And if your mind is completely filled with chaos then you're going to look at these abusive behaviors by your partner and just accept that, like, no, that's totally fine. That's normal. And you are gonna you can go through years of not knowing at all that you're in this terrible environment that's only making you more sick. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and I, I just thought that was such a profound thought that you brought up. I thought that was, that was really well said because um, I, I think it helps a lot of people realize that maybe they shouldn't accept certain behavior. Mm-hmm. And I think, I think that was really profound. Um, but I guess moving on a little bit, I wanted to ask you as a, as a single mother, what do you think is like a misconception? What's the biggest misconception that people usually like put on you about being a single mom? Um, to be honest, I don't think I've struggled with misconceptions. Mm -hmm. I feel like I've surrounded myself with good people. And when I, when I'm out in the world, I feel like I'm always being received like lovingly not just me and my son you know we're both i haven't come across a situation where there's been like a bias or misconception or an assumption made about me that's made me feel like uncomfortable Mm -hmm. if anything people are always like is that your brother (laughs) 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 are you dead ass (laughs) yes people have asked me if ezra's my little brother um that's rare i feel like that's a perspective they'll they'll be like oh or like oh my god i couldn't even tell like your mom like you look so good I don't know if it's just like pretty privilege, you know. I yeah. I wonder if, if I look yeah. I wonder if like if I look differently, people would make more <laughs> assumptions or you know make yeah. me feel bad or something. Yeah. But personally, like I, I feel like I haven't sh- like had any issues really surrounding like being like a single mom. Mm-hmm. Have I had them about myself for sure, but not others having postings on me. I feel like me personally, I feel like what I would sh- used to struggle with would be like. I'm going to be a burden, like, when in, when I go back to dating. Like, people are not going to want to... My fear would be, like, oh, people are not going to accept my son or, like, people are going to are gonna make me feel like, you know, like I'm, a, like I'm too much because I come with my yeah. son. Mm-hmm. Do you think that's a valid opinion to have, like, if a man doesn't want to date you because you have a son? I think it's valid to not want to date someone with a son. I just don't think it's valid for you to make that person feel bad for having a son. Like if you well don't want to, like if you don't want to date someone with a child, I completely understand. Maybe you're in a completely different area of your life. Maybe you want to travel a lot. Maybe you want to, whatever the case may be, you know. Um, but I feel like if you try to make a person feel bad for having a kid, like that's that's where I feel like that's fucked up. Like you could just, you know, <laughs> what go on about your day. Why do you guys think that happens? Why do you, why do you think people shame people for having like kids like that, like a uh, unplanned kids, right? Yeah. Um, I don't know. I just think there's like I feel bad. I feel like kids get such a bad rep, mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. having children and just or just children in general like get such a bad rep. And I personally was that person too. Like before I had kids, I would talk shit about kids <laughs> so bad. I would and I would also I would always be like I'm gonna be that rich auntie with no kids. I just <laughs> travels the world and like 
advise her niece and nephew stuff. Like, I'm not going to be, like, having no kid. Like, I would say stuff like that. Be careful what you, wi- be careful what you say because life has a funny way of, like, biting you in the ass. Um, but <laughs> I think. Um, Brandon, go ahead. Say, say uh, um, I'm, I'm never going to have a kid before the why? age of 30. Why? I don't know. I just want it to be funny. It'd be funny to have it on record. But I do and want kids. I, I said before kids, 30. Though. But I do want kids. Oh, before you want them before 30? 30? I wouldn't mind one. Before wow. Like okay, Brandon. Okay, I respect that. If I, I respect if that. If I had the money, you. of course. Yeah, I'm not going to shame you. I'm I said I'm going to get to 35. <laughs> That's not 33. That's I want, a good age. I want to be like Robert De Niro. Who, uh, mm-hmm. Have you seen that? He's he's uh, 80 years old and he has a six-month-old son. Yeah. No, that's insane. Yeah. <laughs> that is actually insane. Is that ethically fucked up? What do you mean? To have like a kid knowing that you're not going to be around when they're like probably maybe teenagers or adults? Um, I don't know. He's How rich, so I feel like that kid's in a pretty good position. Yeah. yeah. How old was his, uh, was his wife? I have no that's idea. That's probably where the ethics come from. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I don't think it comes with, the, you know. You don't I think, think it comes with that? Wait, go ahead, go ahead. Well, because I was like, I know that you're at higher risk, the ol- as at least for women, you're at higher risk the older you are mm-hmm. wi- when you have kids. Like, for me, like, how I say, like, I'm going to have them at, like, 35, that's already high risk, like, for myself. I want to um, say that his wife's probably way younger. She's probably in yeah, her 30s. Yeah, I think she was. I think I want to say it. She was yeah. I don't remember how young, but she was for sure, like, at least half his age. Well, yeah, she probably has Damn. to be. You know, that's crazy. That's wild. She was probably born when he was already like a fifty-year-old man. Oh yes, exactly. That's crazy. That's yeah. Wild. Well, because you guys have heard of Theo Vaughn, right? Yeah. You know who Theo Vaughn yeah, is? Yeah. What about him? Uh, well, he had the same thing. Like his, I think he was born when his dad was like in like his seventies or something. No way. So he passed away when he was uh, really young. I think he was like eight years old. Oh, wow. His dad passed away, and he talks about how like he had to deal with that that idea of his dad having him, knowing that he wasn't going to be around for most of his life. Whoa. And he said that when he was younger. Um, it was really hard to not be angry at his dad, mm. but as he got older, he kind of learned to forgive him. Yeah. Um, for doing that, cause he he obviously probably didn't have him expecting that he was gonna abandon him or anything. Mm. But when he was really young, he felt like it was like like abandonment. Yeah. But that'd be crazy. I, d- I imagine having a son, a kid at eighty years old. At least for a dude, I think that's crazy. Have you guys heard of that girl? I think I don't remember. I don't want to butcher her name. I think it was like. Drea, Drea, something like that. Mm. She was like a like an Insta baddie. Um, <laughs> she's been around though. I think she came on a couple of shows or something like that. Mm-hmm. And she had a baby recently with like a twenty two. Like I think he played basketball oh, or something yeah. like that. Oh yeah, you've heard. Yeah, and she was like what, like forty, like almost pushing fifty. She's she. Uh, you haven't heard about it? It's I think it's an NBA player. Uh, Which he's twenty two. Yeah, I and forget. her son is literally the same age, twenty two. He's 22, and yeah, she's like 42. Mm. Yeah. No? I heard her. Yeah, it, it happened recently. Do you I guys think what it's that's like, wh- how do you guys feel about that? Do you think she... I mean, um, if we keep the same energy... I don't know. I feel like those scenarios are kind of weird, because uh, I've seen... What's her name? She's also like a famous like Instagram model. Brittany she, Renner? Brit- yeah. yeah. Where she's... I knew where it. it leaked. Not, I don't know if it leaked, but she basically just says like, oh, if, if you're like, if you're good looking and you're, and you're like... Uh, and you make some money, like um, oh. just get just get pregnant by an NBA kid, like they're stupid as fuck. Mm. And s- I think she recently, and then w- a- right after she said that, she announced she was like pregnant with like some twenty-one year olds kid. What? Yeah, so I feel like that's a little predatory, you know? Yeah, uh, I don't know. Well, you as a mom of a son, how did how would how would you feel if your son was twenty-two and then he's like, "Mom, I got I got this girl pregnant," and you're like, "No way!" You you he over here, you're thinking like she's like his age or whatever. And he's like, "No, she's like in her forties." I feel like I would have failed as a mother, to be honest. Yeah, <laughs> you break down. Like I, I would, I would move forward with it, but in the moment, I feel like I would definitely feel disappointed in my parenting. I, I feel like if Ezra ever did something like that, I would feel like as a, like a failure because I feel like if I loved my son properly and instilled good values in him and morals, and he had a good head on his shoulders. He wouldn't be attracted to a forty-two-year-old woman, mm. and he wouldn't feel like he lacked anything to feel attracted to a forty-two-year-old woman that was obviously being predatorial, predatorial towards him. Mm-hmm. I feel like his attention would be on like girls his age. I don't think having sex with a forty-two-year-old would be a turn on to him. I mean, maybe looking at her, he could have maybe acknowledge that yeah, she's attractive because I know that's like normal, like bio- like biology, right? To feel look at someone attractive, like, oh, that's attractive, but. To act on it, right? I feel like that would be, and maybe even if he acted on it, okay. But I never want to find out. But <laughs> to not like use like safe sex, right? That's like another topic for him to like 
straight up, you know, get someone pregnant. Um, I was like, damn, that's crazy. But then again, if she was planning on it, she trapped his ass. She played him. If though. she played him, would you hate her? Crazy. Would you hate her? Would I hate her? Yeah, the girl. Because you're you're saying like obviously your son needs to take responsibility, but also what would I you think of the older woman? I don't think I have it in my heart to hate. like hate. I feel like I'd be angry, but I think I would move past it. Like if mm-hmm. the kid was gonna be in my life, if it's gonna be my grandbaby, like I would love my grandbaby regardless. Like I w- I wouldn't. I'd be cordial with her. I don't think we'd have like an amazing <laughs> friendship because yeah. I don't think that's what she wants. I just think she just want money, right? Whatever. Yeah. But she'd um, be your age at exactly, that point. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Like I'd be literally, that's the part that I'd be like, that's crazy. I don't know what the fuck you were doing. Yeah. But, well, um, yeah. I was going to say on the cross, that'll never happen. Yeah. yeah. I think I crossed. Uh, you're going to raise him, right? But it, it goes yeah. into my, my final topic for today. I, I was going to say like, because we're, we're part of our community as Mexican Americans, we have like a lot of traditions and a lot of way that we think of like, either gender norms or even, like, uh, values. And you even brought up, like, when you meet family members, sometimes, like, they're very touchy and stuff. What are c- what are certain things that you feel like is going to differ from the traditional Mexican standard when you raise your son? <laughs> like, when it comes to maybe even gender roles, gender norms. Yeah. Like, because, uh, you know, people have... The big, the easiest one I can think of is, like, paint and nails. Obviously, yeah. people have a big problem with that. Yeah. Are you going to instill the same things that your parents instilled in you and our culture instilled in you? Or are you going to differ? Yeah, some things I do, but... I feel like what I'm doing differently now, for example, I don't force Ezra to hug or kiss anyone. And it's much more fulfilling when he does do it naturally because I know he wants to, not because I s- I'm like, as soon as we get there, you know, you have to hug and kiss. I I do make him say hi, which is like, uh, like you know, just proper, like, respect, like, you know, saludar when you, like, enter a room. But I never force, like, a hug or a kiss. And my family actually hates that. And I've actually had issues with that in the past. Because families see that as, like, a sign of disrespect. Like, why don't you, like, hug or kiss me? Or, like, how could you allow him to say no to me? Like, they feel so, like, appalled. And it, it's it'll it's not an issue anymore because they know now that, like, I'm firm in, like, my parenting. I can't just be pushed over. Um, so they've learned to, like, deal with it. But they're still not, like, happy about it. Mm-hmm. But it's so funny because on the flip side of that, when my son does give them a, a hug or a kiss, they embrace him deeply, not in a way that, I notice they embrace my other nieces and nephews or cousins just, like, briefly, right, if that makes sense. It's just, like, a quick. But my son, they embrace him deeply. It's, like, they appreciate it more. Mm-hmm. And I and I love that. I love seeing that. Um, Ezra already, like, cleans. He literally, like, picks up after himself. Like, I think for me, hygiene is a big thing with men. Like, I want, I want him to, like, you know, clean the toilet if he pees around it or, you know, but the toilet seat down, you know, because it bugs me when I would date men. I would go over to their places and it toilets were disgusting, things like that. Um, so it's like he already knows like proper hygiene, which I think is important. Um, I don't want to like my him. I feel like I would cringe so bad like if I ever, like if Ezra ever got a girlfriend and like me and her became like besties and then she started venting to me about Ezra. Like I feel like it would be like the worst thing to hear <laughs> to say like your son is so dirty. Like la, la, la. you know, like I would hate that. Mm-hmm. I would hate that. Yeah. Um. So I do, he knows that he has, like, his little chores. But I don't, I don't phrase them as chores when I talk to him about it. I, I explain it to them that these are things he has to do so he can feel good about himself. So he can have, like, a good, clear mind, have a, a, a space where he feels safe and comfortable in. I li- and I notice that when I phrase it and, like, I speak to him in those ways, as opposed to there's sometimes where I'm frustrated about, like, the mess. It, it's, like, it overwhelms me. And there's times where, like, I can yell at him to pick something up it's like he gets like he doesn't want to do it as opposed to when i explain it to him in ways that um seem like it'll be like good for him he is more willing to help out and like do things um what else am i doing one thing i will say that i'm fucking up in is i'm not teaching him spanish i am fucking up so bad in that and i just it's so hard him the game yeah. I know, <laughs> i'm about to i'm about to it's so i i he likes watching movies in spanish so which mm-hmm. i I'm glad that he has that. And my mom speaks to him in Spanish, but it doesn't come off natural to me anymore. Like, I feel like Spanish took a backseat for me a long, long, long time ago. So being a parent has definitely been a struggle for me because he knows certain things, but I can't. And then his dad literally is worse than me when it comes to Spanish. So it, if he's going to learn, it has to be up to me. So I'm just mm-hmm. like, fuck. Like, 
I want him to know Spanish. I want him to know, like, the culture. I don't want him to go to Mexico and not be able to communicate with my family or, like, my cousins and things like that. Like, yeah. Or, like, if he ever travels to Mexico and he's older and not be able to, like, appreciate the culture. Or, like, if he gets lost, not be able to, like, have, you know, just mm -hmm. converse, even just have a conversation. I feel like, um, so I'm trying my best to speak yeah. to him, like, more in Spanish. But, yeah, because um, st statistically, Spanish gets lost within the second generation. So that's Ezra's generation. Yeah, literally. Yeah, your 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 statistics. Dude, it's, I'm embarrassed to say it, but my my niece and my nephew from my older sister, literally, her, their dad is white, and they know more Spanish than really. Ezra. Is it is it because your sister is like more intentional with it? I think yeah. I think my sister is definitely more. I think Spanish comes off to her more easy mm -hmm. than it does for me. Um, I just feel like I'm used to yapping all day in English, so like <laughs> it's just it's just always in my go to. You, yeah. And when I try to speak. Spanish to him now, I feel like it frustrates me that he can't understand me. So I just like switch back to English. I'm like, okay, I give up. Like, and I, I don't have that patience when it comes to just like language. Dude, and it's hard because I imagine uh, also too, like you said, it's not serious yet, but the person you're dating also isn't Latino, right? No, yeah. he's not. He's mixed. Yeah, that's hard because I. Black. Well, dude, I feel like my Spanish has gotten better, guys. Can, uh, all the audience like, can like <laughs> clap for me. I think my, my Spanish has gotten better. Mainly because it has, I swear. <laughs> let let me play your sabor real quick. Right, no, 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 no. <laughs> nah, but I think it's gotten better because I, I speak Spanish like all day basically at well, work. At work yes, yeah, sure. and then I jokingly mentioned it uh, to my girl once that I was like, ah, uh, like I wish I had l I had like had just better Spanish so that way I can feel more comfortable talking to my family because I'd love to just ask them like all about like our family's origin and stuff mm -hmm. related to that topic. And I mentioned it that one time, and now she, like, forces me to speak Spanish. Sometimes That's we're good. Yeah, we're just talking Spanish and just pure Spanish. Yeah. And it's, it's cool. It's really cool. Like, and, and that's why I related to your to you because I'm like, wow, you're not even dating, like, a Latino man either. Not that that's bad. I just mean, like, that's obviously a challenge. <laughs> it like, is. Yeah. But it's funny because he has a daughter, too. I don't know if I mentioned that to you guys. Um, and she's three, but his baby mama is a Latina, too. So oh, it's like, wow. So I think the little girl does know. Spanish. I think so. I haven't really asked actually, but <laughs> I mean, I think it's so <laughs> funny because he um he dances really well to like Latino music, um, and that's actually one of the things I like about him. So it's like we might not be able to Spanish date like class together, <laughs> huh? Spanish like a date, date, yeah, 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 date yeah, night, maybe, Spanish class. Maybe I feel like he genuinely like if I I feel like if I maybe ask him to learn it, I feel like he might be interested in it honestly. Mm -hmm. But no, yeah, that's it's gonna be up to me for Ezra to to learn learn yeah. Spanish. I believe in you. No, I mean, it's I feel like it's n it's never really too late, especially with your kid. Mm -hmm. Like he's still learning like words and stuff. That's what they're telling me. That's mm -hmm. still like I, if I still like really like locked in, he could learn. So I just haven't locked in yet. But I'm thinking about putting him when he's because he's starting school this year. Mm -hmm. There's like dual immersion classes where they uh -huh. teach in English and Spanish. Mm -hmm. So I think I'm gonna put him in in those because. Yeah, he needs that extra. Have you ever heard that stat that said that it's a lot easier for kids to learn anything before the age of eight? Like before then, it, it's almost like a language. Like it, y if you teach a kid anything before the age of eight, they're more likely to learn that and remember that the whole life. Have you ever heard of that? Mm. It was it was something that um I heard when we were. Julie, remember when we were younger, we were playing a uh, guitar and piano. We would learn how to play them. I remember, but we were learning them already, like, at age 11, and yeah. I was like, fuck. <laughs> I was like, this is going to be hard. Because supposedly it's a lot harder after age 8, like, for any human to learn something new after the age of 8. Uh, so if you want to, this I guess, shout out to anybody out there with kids. <laughs> if you want something to stick with your kids forever, you got to teach them before they turn 8. So you got time. That makes sense, because remember, mm -hmm. I, I, I don't know if I mentioned it here, about how, like, the subconscious mind of a person forms from like one from when they're born to like age seven. Mm -hmm. So like it would make sense that like before eight, right? Yeah, it's yeah. like it's gonna be like embedded like deeply, like in the yeah, brain. bro. Because I remember when I when I made the connection that like I could speak Spanish because obviously it was just natural to yeah. me because uh, my mom would just speak it and then er all my family members would speak it. Yeah. So I never like I never went to a class to learn it. Yeah. And then when I was like fourteen, it suddenly hit me like I feel like I almost like my subconscious woke up. And I was like, damn, I've never thought about it, but I can speak Spanish, and I don't know where I <laughs> learned that from. Uh, but then when I, when I made that connection, for some reason, Spanish became harder to me. What? Because now I'm like, Spanish words are properly said this way. And uh, before it was more like a, ref like, like a yeah. reflex, like almost mm -hmm. like instinct. Mm -hmm. 
But once I st- thought about like actual words and I thought about like grammar in Spanish, I'm like, I don't know anything about that. So like, how do I know what I'm saying is correct? And it, it fucked me up. And, and ever since then, I've always been like, no oh, sabo sure. now. <laughs> no, honestly, I really, I feel like I know Spanish, but I feel like I know like the ghetto version of Spanish. Have you ever like seen like a newscaster <laughs> yeah. speak in like in Spanish? It's their vocabulary is insane. I'm yeah. like, weirdly, I understand it. Like, but a lot of words, like, I don't know, like, it's pro- like the proper Spanish. Like, when I was in high school, I took uh, AP Spanish, and I would always fail the test, not because I didn't know the words, because I didn't know, like, the accents, yeah. and those always fucked me up. I don't know why. N- they never stuck. Never stuck. You know what I've heard from my friends who aren't Mexican, but, like, are from different countries in Latin America? Supposedly, Mexican Spanish is, like, dirty slang Spanish. Which is like a a prejudice, like it's fucked up that they think that, um, but oh, apparently, like yeah, <laughs> but it's supposedly it's true. Supposedly, it Latin is. America thinks that Mexican Spanish is really fucking bad. Um, it's because low key it is. Yeah, because like, yeah, yeah. all my family only ever speaks like the ghetto Spanish. Like yeah. that's what they call it. That's they call literally it ghetto what Spanish. it is. Because I've heard like proper Spanish, uh-huh. and it doesn't sound at all like yeah. how we speak. Yeah. And I mean, to me, like I don't give a fuck. Like we we understand each other. That's yeah. all that matters. But um, I can understand how people are like, well, there's no proper Spanish. It's like, yeah. bitch, you understand what the fuck I'm saying. Like, <laughs> relax. Yeah, we understand what mm-hmm. we're saying. Yeah. yeah, they do too. They do too. Just because we're not using big words doesn't mean they don't understand what we're saying. Like, but I've heard, I've heard other people from Latin America being like, man, those fucking Mexicans, like, huh? like, well, because it's true, right? We've always heard Spain Spanish. Oh. I've heard that most of Latin America is more closer to Spain Spanish than Mexico is. That Mexico almost has its own Spanish dialect. Wow. Which is w- is is weird. I mean, th- there are a lot of words that are different. I always saw it more as like slang. Like we mm-hmm. we say the slang. I I can't remember the words anymore. But there are certain things that we say that are that we kind of like made our own. Like mm-hmm. I can't I can't think of them. Like I I keep thinking of like chamarra. Like there's different ways to say like a jacket. Mm-hmm. Um, and different cultures have different ways of saying it. But I think it's just like we just have our own like language from different yeah. countries i just didn't know this slander was happening until recently <laughs> i was like dead ass people think our our spanish is shit yeah or at least it's ghetto and dirty i'm like that's fucked up i'm about to start ghetto a war and dirty is crazy <laughs> <laughs> like huh? ghetto but dirty is crazy <laughs> <laughs> i know right it's giving like damn it's th- you're they're saying it a little too hard no yeah. for real no, there's what something the deeper in there yeah. i know yeah. <laughs> Well, I hear, I hear it goes deep, bro. I hear it's because, uh, uh, what is it called? It's called homogenized uh, nationality. That when most of the world thinks of Latin America, they think of Mexico. Yeah. So because of that, a lot of the other Latin American countries have kind of some th- a really big grudge against Mexicans and yeah. me- uh, Mexico because they're tired of always being homogenized. Basically, when people hear Latino or Latina, mm-hmm. or they see people like Bad Bunny, they're like, oh, is he Mexican? Yeah. And they're like, no, he's Puerto Rican. Yeah. Or uh, they see uh, Kelly Uche is like, oh, is she Mexican? It's like, no, she's from her family's from Colombia. Yeah. Right? Like, so people get such a big prejudice and a big anger towards Mexico. So that's where the dirty ghetto Spanish comes from. It's like, they don't even speak proper Spanish. And that's not even our fault. Like, blame the education system. That they don't <laughs> probably educate us. On well, because I know, I know for, like, school, they don't show you, at least, like, because my boyfriend said he took Spanish classes, but they show him, like, the Spain Spanish. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, I, th- I think it's just, like, the, the way system. we learn it. Yeah, yeah, the system and stuff like that. Yeah. But I know for sure, like, for my kids, I know I want them to, like, learn no, spanish no spanish like i know that that's what i'm gonna hmm? the proper spanish or the ghetto spanish <laughs> I don't, think ghetto. Ghetto. don't call it, I'm the, gonna ghetto call it the slang <laughs> uh, the slang spanish i remember because uh when i used to go back uh with my family to mexico and stuff when we go on vacation um a lot of the kids there like speak like slang slang like straight up like slang um and I never understood them because I was so, like, used to, like, the way my parents would talk to me. And I'm like, what are you guys saying? And then eventually I started, like, because I would go there so much, I started, like, developing, like, their slang. So I started, like, talking like them. They but they but it's out. very much, like, <laughs> like I guess in the way, like, the ghetto Spanish. Um, <laughs> like, you know the way, you you know, like, the way, like, I guess. Stop calling like, it the <laughs> I mean, I don't like saying ghetto, but, like, I, I just feel like. 
I mean, in, in Mexico, at least the where our parents were from, I mean, I feel like some of the kids don't like going to, like, school and shit. So, like, um, like I remember one, it's, like, tu y yo, or, and then some people would be, like, yo y tigo or something like that. Like, they, mm-hmm. they turned it into slang. So, no, they, they created their own, like, language in a way. Um, and I think that's just, like, the way it develops because, like, most mm-hmm. of them just, like, end up just trading, like, their their yeah. language like that. Yeah. Um, and do you remember uh, Papi, he told us... Uh, uh, he told us that some of the words are also derived from like Nahuatl so or grandma or, or great grandpa or something. Yeah. They would use like the old like uh, native dialect. And so it, it even got even more mixed because then that yeah. became popular. I want to say it was like Mesa. I think Mesa is like is from it, but I could be wrong. So take that with a grain of salt. Maybe yeah. I'm wrong. But yeah, that's basically where all the hybrid of the language came from. Yeah. But, but I feel like each uh each place kind of has their own no, they, each, sure. they each Puerto have their Rico own has that too. i'm like they each have their own like accent too like when when yeah. when everyone kind of like speaks it's like they have their own accent in a way like you yeah. can tell when someone's like puerto rican or something yeah. like, that. like they have this like yeah accent and the way that they speak sometimes yeah like they all i feel like they all, all each have their own ghetto version of their own language <laughs> <laughs> like why is, why are you only coming for a mexican <laughs> one just because everyone thinks like They're mexican. y'all mexico yeah. makes yeah. mexican yeah, well, it'd be it's like not grudge. Fair. It'd yeah. be like if well, it'd be like if you had a sister, right? And every time people uh, see you, and they're like, "Oh, you're," I'm not gonna say your actual sister's name because I know it. You're uh, you're um, Jennifer, Ver- Veronica, because close to Vanessa. Yeah. And I was like Veronica. I was like, "No, I'm Vanessa." It's like, "Oh, it's Veronica." And it's like, "My name is Vanessa." And be like, "It's like, oh, they're cool. Like, I I, I know Veronica there." And it's like, "My name is Vanessa." And it's, you know, it's like as if people always thought of you. They instead thought of your sister. You yeah. know, eventually you'd get annoyed and be like, man, fuck her. <laughs> <laughs> like, so I don't blame, like, the Latin American countries. But, I mean, why they say fuck me for it, you know? Like, yeah. what do we do? We're, do? we're not doing it. Yeah. It's just, like, <laughs> it's just an unfortunate too, side. Like, yeah, I guess. I guess so. <laughs> well, I mean, I do feel for them, for sure. Yeah. I yeah. mean, especially in the, in, in the time when fucking Trump was on the fucking thing. And he's yeah. like, oh, like, Mexican this, Mexican that. And it's like, that's not all what it is, you know? Yeah, yeah. especially when you look at, like, Border Patrol. I'm not going to go into a tangent about that, but <laughs> and even in Border Patrol, like a lot of people who come that are seen as like Mexican migrants, some of them are even from Mexico, from Guatemala, the Honduras, yeah, like all, all those other countries. So I I get the frustration, but I'm also like, man, but we didn't do anything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We're just existing. We're just we just happen to be the biggest country, one of the biggest countries in Latin America. Um, but wrapping things up, Vanessa, I want to say thank you for coming yeah. on Women's History Month, as oh, yeah. always. We had Thank to give a, a a shine a spotlight on uh, <laughs> the IE besties because the IE besties is very woman coded, and we try to be yeah, very yeah. like leaning towards women. Thank you. So Thank you. shout out to you. And shout job. out to the other women who are on this podcast. <laughs> I said the other women. It's only Julie. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I like to think that we have like a whole crew, like mm-hmm. o- outside of just people who are on oh, here. Oh, they're on the back. Of yeah, the yeah, yeah. <laughs> shout out to our women writers and our staff. Writers. Y'all can't see them. They're behind the camera. <laughs> They're all waving and waving. clapping. <laughs> They're here, <laughs> we promise. <laughs> yeah, but uh, well, Brendan, why don't we go ahead and give a shout out to our Patreon? Yeah, shout out to Yoel, shout out to Jay Chicano, shout out to Daniel Villanueva, Angel Zamaron, Sarah without an H, Carlos, and Stephen Carbajal. Uh, your great, your patronage is greatly appreciated. If anybody ever wants to join the Patreon, our link is always in the bio. Uh, so definitely go check that out. Once again, thank you so much to Vanessa of IE and Besties. I'm sure you've heard of their show if you're watching our show. <laughs> so <laughs> go check out that show and uh, all the great shows on the IE Network. But um, yeah. we hope you, g- you guys enjoyed this episode, and we'll see you guys next week. See ya. Bye. Bye.